All right, welcome back to the Golf Podcast. As you guys know, we weren't around last week, but we've got a really good excuse because we were filming a epic six video series down in Myrtle Beach. Mike, th that was- A lot of golf. That was a trip to remember. Dude, it was fun. A lot of golf in a short period of time. It really was. So, you know, we had some highs, we had some lows, we <laughs> had some of our favorite things about, some things that surprised us a bit. It was our first trip to Myrtle. Yep. And by the way, I'm gonna invite you guys, if you're watching this on YouTube or on Facebook, if you've been to Myrtle, um, throw some of your own experiences down in the comments. Uh, if you haven't and you've got some questions, throw them in there. Uh, because a large part of why we do this too is we want to have you know a little bit of recon for you guys. We know a lot of you guys put together golf trips. A lot of you DM us and ask like, where should I play? Where should I not when I'm down there? So this is um, a learning experience for us. Uh, and it's one of those things that I know we're going to have to go back. There's way too much golf than you can ever cover in yeah, one trip totally. in Myrtle. There's 90 golf courses just on that that grand strand strip. We didn't even play 10%. I know. <laughs> but I think we played a lot of the best. And and speaking of mm -hmm. which, Mike, you helped put the trip together. So for for yeah. you know, for the the listeners, just kind of like let's run through what the trip looked like in some of the courses we played, and then we'll kind of piece by piece go through totally, each one. Totally, man. And for you um that are not subscribed to the main channel, that's where we we do most of the filming for uh, are these trips. And we're going back 2019. This is a trip that we've been doing uh win partnership with Footjoy for five years, four or five years now. Scotland in 2019, Pinehurst, Kohler. Uh we've had others set up. I think I think Vancouver was on the list or uh, what was that? Uh, Col Whist Whistler. That's what it was. Yeah. Whistler. Got to ask the skier over there. Whistler. Uh, that got canceled. Myrtle Beach, like eight years ago, got canceled because of a hurricane. Yeah. So this trip is fun. I love putting it together every year. Every year. And what's cool is we get to pick the destination. That's the cool part. So when it came time, we're like, all right, we got to do Myrtle. There's way too much golf. So play golf Myrtle Beach. Hats off to those guys. Great. Yeah. They helped set up the itinerary for the trip. They were kind of letting us know based on where we were staying, proximity to the courses, the best of the best to play. Um, and we put it together. We flew out of Newark. We got there and we played the minute we got off the plane. Well, I would say, too, that's my first takeaway and kind of pro tip here is that if it is your first trip to Myrtle, use somebody like we use play golf Myrtle Beach somebody who knows what to do and how to get you around to help plan the trip mm -hmm. you know and and that's not a paid sponsorship or any plug or anything like that we are ultimately incredibly thankful for their help with this it was not like in any way a sponsored thing um but i i say if i was doing this for myself not filming i would have went the same route because there's nuances too yeah. like you think myrtle beach it's also a big place like they were really key in helping us understand like when we did 36 in a day, which courses to put together, right. which courses you could, you could get back to back tee times, how to get from one to the other. I think that those were, that was massively helpful. So I would say whether it be play golf, Myrtle beach or some other scheduling or helping with assisting like golf planning yeah. trip, when you've got a place as you know, overflowing with golf as Myrtle Beach, like ha have somebody help you. You need it because I mean, you anyone can Google search the best courses in Myrtle Beach, right? right? You'll get a list, but the lists are all different because there's 20 courses. Uh, there's 20 of those 90 that are like must plays, right? So how do you know? Right. Or even just take example, Barefoot, right? Mm -hmm. Barefoot Resort. There's four amazing courses there, you know, and, and we could have played any one of them and had a great time, but we really enjoyed the love course. And, and that was a, a huge part with, uh, with Chris who helped set it up from play golf. He's like, I, you know, I put you here and this is why, and I think you guys are going to enjoy it. It's just massively helpful. And on top of that, too, beyond the golf, there's so many places to eat down there. Yep. There's so many things to do. Mm -hmm. Having somebody who can kind of like give you a punch list of what to hit and what to stay away from, yeah. super helpful. But oftentimes, too, there's always in like in a golf trip, there's always like one guy or two guys who've been to Myrtle a few yeah, times. Of course. You can kind of lean on them and they kind of help out. But, uh, but I mean, if, let's let's kind of walk through it and talk through like a couple of, you know, start to finish. I mean, the first thing, A, getting there. Yep. Um. I love super small, convenient airport right in Myrtle Gotta Beach. Gotta love it. Yep. I mean, I, I the fact that you can fly into Myrtle Beach and then drive your 30 minutes from the golf, A, it's convenient, but B, it helps squeeze in more golf. Yeah. Because we flew in and we were on the tee box within two hours. We even hit a driving range. Yeah. It was very rare for us to get off a plane and hit a driving range. Right. We're usually racing. I know. Thing. And this was nice. We flew in and it, from New York, it's an hour and a half in the air yeah, if that right super easy it was an hour 20 coming back yeah so down was, to south carolina super easy that airport reminded me of um 
the one in um, Hilton Head Savannah when we went to Sea Island. Yeah, small. Yeah, it's easy. like the you one get to the golf Kiwa real quick. too. Yep. All those right. those you know airports are super small, super easy to get in and out yep. of. But so we drive over first golf course we hit was Grand Dunes. Yeah, and um, great one out of the gate. Really was so Grand Dunes. A couple of things. One, they recently had the greens all redone. Um, yep. and I think it, it showed because the greens were, they were, they were fast. They were true. Mm -hmm. I think that was a really good kickoff to our trip. Um, but what I liked so much was that there are multiple holes on that course that line the intercoastal waterway there. And it makes for some really stunning views. Oh, you yeah. see the boats coming up and down. Um, but it also it made for some really challenging holes. It sure did. That's signature. I mean, you had wide open three. fairways, which were great. Right, right. There's one thing. That's I, what you want when you get off a flight. It, you definitely. <laughs> totally. Your your real confidence booster of a, of a course is got to be as far as like for tee shots has got to yeah. be Grand Dunes, and we learned really quick that that the scoring the t the tough part was getting your approach shots mm -hmm. and around the greens. Yep. Um. But the the fairways you you could. You could land an aircraft, <laughs> you know, you could yeah. on, on some of those fairways. Yeah, totally. I mean, would you agree that at uh, Ultimate Buddies Golf Trip in Myrtle, if you're landing in that airport, if you're playing on day one, you got to put Grand Dunes as your first stop. I think it was a perfect first stop. Great warm up course. I'm not saying it was any kind of walk in the park, but because of those wide fairways. Well, and the other and thing the too is you got to understand, like every course on the list we played, we were, we were very fortunate in this way. Every course that we played was. At one point, if not currently, in the top, you know, top 100 courses you could play. Yep. You know, they're all public courses, mm -hmm. right? So they were on that list. Top 100 courses you could play, top in state. They mm -hmm. had all had a huge accolades. And we go through all of those uh, in the videos themselves. So these are all top tier courses. There's no denying it. Um, if you want to, we didn't get to dive into that. But one thing that Chris from Play Golf Myrtle Beach was telling us is that if you're also coming for a super value, we talk about 90 golf courses. There's a lot of golf courses that have deals and super value. They're right. just not necessarily of the higher And that caliber. might be great for some groups. They're just looking for that cheap round. Right. Yep. If you're looking for that cheap round. This, we kind of went the other way trying to feature some of the best courses. But Grand Dunes, especially when you got near that waterway, there were some beautiful holes. I think it was at the 13th hole was the, the par three signature hole. 13 or 14. It was summer 30 or 14. 14. Yeah. So 14th hole, um, unbelievably intimidating tee shot. Yeah. You know, you're just looking right. at this, this, this green that kind of, it's not, su it's super wide, but not super deep protected by bunkers. If you go long the whole right side, forget about it. It's gone. It's the intercoastal waterway. Mm -hmm. Um, not a lot of places you can miss and get away with it. You and did. I mean, you got it. You got a hell of a shot there. You do. The second shot. Yours. I, my, <laughs> yes. well, I got away with it. Yeah. I, I ended up in a, a tough spot and an up and down that saved One of the best hard. up and downs that I've ever witnessed. Right it was keep going. Sorry. Big time. But what I liked too there is, and this is something that was a theme that carried throughout all of Myrtle Beach, was that if you've got a mixed group of ability level golfers, mm -hmm. you're going to be fine because every course we played had five or more tee box options and every course in this whole series that we played i think maybe save for caledonia mm -hmm. every other one you could push it to seven thousand plus yards yeah, if you wanted you could so if you've got some real gamers and who want that extra challenge because i'm thinking about that that exact hole on that par three there were some tee boxes that not only were you playing all that challenge, you were playing it well over two bills, over yeah, 200 yep, yards. Totally. Mm -hmm. But not ev like, again, you, if you, if you're out there, you're more for that fun trip. You don't want to be beat up. There were tee box options that you could play. Like for example, a par three like that at 120, 140 yards, whatever it may be. So one thing I would say is everyone was super nice down there. All the starters, everyone ran to every place we played, we told them, this is our ability level. Mm -hmm. What tees should we play? And they they point us in the right direction. So you've yeah. got options, and you it does it can be hard if you want. It doesn't have to be that hard if you don't want it to be. Right, that's what I love about it. I mean, if you want to make it harder, by all means. But like we found out, especially when we got the TPC Myrtle Beach, you don't make that course harder. No, it's that already course, <laughs> as Chris was telling us, that's a course that was built and designed for yeah, the best you. of the best uh -huh. to, to to play it and be challenged. So 
Grand Dunes, mm-hmm. great kickoff, um, beautiful views, nice big fairways. Those are the big, huge takeaways for us. But as you get closer to the greens, fast, undulating greens, some trickier shots around the greens. But it's a it's a great course to play. Day two. Tell, talk to us about day, day two. Day two is our first uh, day. Uh, we did two days of 36. So 18 on day one, 36, 18, then 36. Yeah. So we kicked off the day at the Heritage Club which was really unique, very different, you know, switch up from the Grand Dunes because you you kind of had a nice drive in. You had different kind of trees there. Uh, you had more island greens, more water. This is where we got our first taste of real southern gators on the course. Mm, Dinosaurs, by the way, yeah. big, yeah. like not small. We're talking huge. Um, but uh, a different, I mean, everywhere we went, there was a little bit of a different golf. There was. And we got it, our next taste of it here. I actually really enjoyed the Heritage Club. Um, I thought the vibe was great. But, man, when the wind picks up there, it's tough. Yeah, and the Heritage Club, too, another thing, again, of trying to plan and understand it. Myrtle is a big place, and it's actually the Heritage Club and Caledonia um, are actually 40, about 40, 45 minutes drive from Myrtle Beach. It's, yeah, it's called it's Pauly's, Pauly's Island. Pauly's Island down mm-hmm. there. Um, but that's, again, where we learned, hey, if you're going to batch to right there, I mean, literally, they're neighbors uh, you have Caledonia, Heritage Club, and you have True, True Blue, Blue right there. And I think there's one other golf course as well. I just don't remember the name. But Her- uh, True Blue would be the one I would go back for. We didn't get to play it. Mm-hmm. I want to go back and play it. But but staying on Heritage right now, here you had where previously, the day before, we played these huge, huge wide open fairways. This was different. Um, you had a lot of these 300-year-old oaks, mm-hmm. and it was you were really – had to put a premium on on better tee shots yes um funny enough again if you wanted to play it really really tough uh the starter was telling us an interesting story at heritage club he said as it stands there were tee boxes there were seven thousand yards he goes but there's additional tee boxes he goes they get about six rounds a year Mm -hmm. so we don't cut them all the time right but when they want to play championship level golf he goes if they cut those tee boxes and you play those tee boxes he said it's the second hardest golf course to slope rating um, in the entire state of South Carolina, second only to one course, and that's the ocean course at Kiowa. Yeah, wow. So mm-hmm. again, you really want your challenge. You can get it just about anywhere. But I remember the Heritage was a very shot makers club. I remember that par five that has a split fairway and a, 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 a river that runs through the middle and a tree, and you mm-hmm. can play it two different ways. Yep. There's a lot of different ways you can do it. I would say no matter what, any of these courses, if it's the first time you're playing it, what was fantastically helpful for us was either a yardage book, get a yardage book, uh, or or get some sort of GPS or something that will show you your, where to hit the ball with layups. And all those places had them in the carts. Almost every Golf one logics, of them did. Even like even like green heat maps. Yes. Like where were we? It was incredible. It was massively <laughs> helpful. I'm even thinking Grand Dunes is the first place we had that. And just being undulating tough greens and first time seeing them. The fact that the cart had it there, and as you drove up, it showed you that yeah. the undulations and the the arrows Which way it was moving. Yep. It was so helpful. So. Heritage Club was really cool. The only thing that I I wish we got to experience a little bit more of was the really cool clubhouse and things like that. Because we played 36, we kind of ran out of there and ran over to Caledonia. Mm -hmm. Um, So taking you over to Caledonia, I mean, this is one of our, our, I would say- We're most stoked for this, right? Yeah, Yeah. I would say so. Because after we had played um, Tobacco Road a couple of years ago, Mike Strand's design, we're like, we got to try We got to do another Mike Strand's. And- What's so incredible about this is you think about Mike Strands, the guy designed nine golf courses in his life before un- his untimely death due to cancer. Mm-hmm. And you could even say more so seven because he did two redesigns and seven, you know, full designs. Yep. And over those nine total at bats, um, it was enough for golf, you know, golf uh, week, I believe it was, and a few others to categorize him as one of the 10 greatest golf architects who ever lived. It's crazy. Think about that list. It's nuts. That's and you've got strands That's got to be batting a thousand. It, it, right. He's batting a thousand. It's like you're a one hit wonder as like a music artist and like you're one of the best in the world, top 10 in the world. Right. Well, that's the thing. He, he, <laughs> artist is the perfect word because he attacked golf so differently. Yeah, you're he right. attacked it less from an engineering standpoint, more from like an artistic standpoint. And Caledonia was his first project. Interestingly enough, before that, he had worked a little bit under Tom Fazio, mm-hmm. uh, which we then got to play a Fazio design in TPC Myrtle Beach later. But um, 
you you could tell he hadn't quite reached the level where he was just like you know all bets are off i'm going to do something dramatic like i did it at tobacco road mm. but we got a feel for parts of it there were we sure greens did. out there that are com- we considered the island greens because they're completely surrounded, surrounded by, by bunkers, waste yeah, and waste. bunkers yep. um and then there is that unbelievable finishing hall 18 yeah I kind of missed it. Did you say that Caledonia was his first course? That was his first solo project. So you can definitely see like where he's headed. Yes. From Caledonia, you're like, oh, I get it now. Yes. Like, this is Tobacco Road, just not quite on steroids. This is like, you know. Yeah. He ramped it up when he got to North Carolina. It's like his first painting. You know exactly. What I'm yeah. And then he, had, he went out you know, and bought more paints, exactly. different paint, better paints. <laughs> and, and I remember the quote from the yardage book um, from Mike Strands in, in, in Tobacco Road. He says, I don't care if my golf, if people think my golf courses are too hard. And he really rope a dope shit. With with Caledonia because he starts you off with this unassuming, yeah, super easy par four. Yep, and it's like, like almost like nothing. You're like, to this it. is it, Mike. Right, and then you make the turn. All of a sudden, it's just it builds and it builds, builds. and it builds, and then the back nine starts to get wild. I mean, just the stretch of 17, 18. 17 is a gorgeous par three with this green that is it's an island green surrounded yep. by uh, bunkering, and then eighteen. What's so cool and unique about that is you've got this really cool clubhouse grill area with a porch outside. And it's just part of the culture of Caledonia mm-hmm. where people gather out there yep. and they either root on or, or boo yep. people coming up. And what mm-hmm. I said in the while we were there, and you'll see this in the video when it comes out, I said 18 is a hole that you hear way before you see it. Yes, you hear it. You hear it. By 15, we're yep. hearing cheers yep. and jeers. And yep. we're like, we're getting close. We're Absolutely. getting close. And the pressure's on. So like, it's a crazy par four because you really can't hit driver. You know, for our length, we can't hit driver because you're in the marsh. Yep. Uh, it's a split fairway, you, and you can't carry the marsh all the way to the to par four green. So we both hit five iron, right? You we both five? hit five iron out in the fairway, and we had about 140, 150 left. That's about it. And the pressure starts to build because now you see the green in the distance, but right, I mean, right behind the green is the porch, and you see everybody out there, they yeah. already had a couple of drinks. Right. And they're ready to go. They're ready to go for your approach shot. And this is absolutely one of my favorite memories from the trip. Yes. So we're going to come back to this. I just want to do a quick word. We're going to come back to it because we got to build this up even more. Let's do a word from our sponsors. <laughs> we're going to come back and tell you what happened. Wait. Yep. All right, guys. The hours have been put in. The work has been done. And as that moment approaches, you either fear it or you feel it. For Titleist, it's a moment filled with pure anticipation. It's the culmination of a relentless pursuit of speed in every form. So step up, settle in with confidence. The Titleist TSR is here. And there's no really better way to explain it than that. I felt so confident in Myrtle Beach, swinging that TSR driver. Yeah, man. Found probably more fairways than I can remember any other time playing. We started calling you Frankie Q Q School after a while. (laughs) (laughs) And I tell you what, it's a lot easier to get those green and regulations when you've got a nice poke out there in the short stuff, that's for sure. And that that new TSR driver, it takes everything that made the TSI driver the number one on tour, and they pack even more performance into every head. So they've got new face technologies, CG improvements, aerodynamic refinements, When everything moves the needle, you're moving at Titleist speed. And more importantly, even if you don't necessarily geek out about all those technological advancements, all you need to know and care about is that you're going to hit the ball further and you're going to hit the ball straighter, Mm -hmm. especially when you pair it with a good fitting. We both got fit not only for the driver, but for the metal woods, the hybrids, TSR. That is a fantastic lineup that you're going to have to try for yourself. So go to Titleist.com. Learn more about TSR medals, but most importantly, schedule your fitting. That's when you really get dialed in and find the right one in the lineup for you. That's Titleist TSR. Find your faster. You know, it's I, I'm noticing a lot more golfers at the range. They're using mobile launch monitors, which is great to see. And I knew it was going to start happening because they're becoming more affordable. Um, Rapsodo is one we've used for a while. The first edition MLM and now as of late, the, the brand new MLM 2 Pro. Um, and like the first one, I mean, you're going to get a ton of metrics. I and mean, the thing is cool. It's great to have with you. It's a great way to practice. Um, I'm always talking about the shot dispersion feature because it's something you could physically 
quickly see where your ball is on a scattered plot and instead of just banging balls on the range and not really getting anything out of it. And that's just one thing. You know, you get uh, you get color coded for each club with pinpoint distance and accuracy. Uh, you can optimize your club gapping. You can dial in wedges evenly. Uh, even I mean, you could do anything with this because it's also a coach, which is great. I mean, it's a game. It's a simulator. Uh, it's metrics. It's a coach. It helps you get better. And for the price of seven hundred dollars, you could tuck this small thing into your bag and you have it forever. And, you know, I can't wait for the endless things you could do with it. Off course, uh, a buddy of mine got one recently and he's like, Mike, I set up an awesome sim in my garage with a tarp. Mm -hmm. You know, I just popped up my MLM2 Pro and boom, I'm swinging away. So if you haven't taken a look at the Rapsodo MLM2 Pro, visit their website, check it out. You're going to absolutely love this device. And big thanks to FootJoy. Uh, they were a big part of this Myrtle Beach series. Yes. They really hooked us up. You know, a lot of great uh, apparel, uh, these awesome new flexes, which I'm loving, by the way. Uh, but they are the number one shoe in golf because they offer the widest selection of sizes, styles, and performance options of any golf shoe out there, whether it's the all new Hyperflex and Hyperflex Carbon. I know you're absolutely I've, I've been saying to people, it. if like you're looking for that one and done shoe for the summer, that's the one. Yeah. I did 36 in it, multiple days yes yeah. super comfortable super traction totally it's I mean, my, it was my go-to in myrtle it was your go-to i like the fuel and even the premier series i mean the shoe That's that me. is yeah as far away as the, the number one choice on tour players that premiere so um guys like justin thomas max home i mean you see him week in week out they're wearing that shoe for a reason so trust the brand that's been number one forever trust your game to foot joy the number one shoe in golf now let's get back to that epic moment because i can't wait to relive that Okay, so Caledonia. Now we we get up to our our approach shots into the green, and and it was it was a, I will say it's a very popular course. It was a little bit yep. backed up. Yep. So we did. We were kind of waiting, and we got to see the other guys in front of us approach the green, and everybody's having fun with this. That's what I want mm -hmm. you guys to understand. We we jokingly say it was pressure, but like everybody's having fun because the guys in front of us. I mean, if you hit anywhere on that green, they're gonna go nuts. They're gonna go nuts, even if your ball the, rolls off. Like if exactly. You get it close, right. And and then I'm so we see these guys in front of us. They hit the one of the guys hits the green and. Everybody on the porch is clapping. And he's jumping up yep. and down. So, like, it's just an enjoyable atmosphere. But we both get up to our shots. And at this point, there's about eight to ten guys on the on the balcony. Yes. A few drinks deep. Probably everybody eight to ten drinks yeah, in. Yeah, at least. Okay. Yes. <laughs> um, but you <laughs> – I can't. But, but anyway, so you went first, right? I went – no, I think you went. Did I go first? Yeah, I went first. I I hit the green and it trickled just off, just left off the back into of the, the rough. They don't boo, which is great. Right, it's just an oh. Well, well you hit a, the green. It was a cheer, and then it was just like a subtle uh, tail. Yeah, yeah, I think you'd have to put it in the marsh <laughs> to get a boo. I think so, but or skull one right into the. But then, yeah, you're just off the back of the green too, and they're cheering and stuff like that. I I had I remember I pulled a pitching wedge, mm -hmm. um, because the ball was it was carrying out there. You know, yeah. I know we're down at sea level, but like it was just like it was warm. It was easy to compress and, the, and, and it was just carrying. So I hit the pitching wedge and uh, this thing I see it in the air. It starts fading like right at the it end. was so pretty. And I'm like, oh, boy. Yeah. I'm like this will and like if this is the right distance, these guys are going to go nuts. Yeah. Right. So it lands just short of the pin and it starts rolling towards this thing. Yeah. And um they lost. We're it. talking like Augusta Sunday cheers. They lost. Yeah. There was one guy who saw it on the drone. He's just he's holding onto the railing. And he's just jumping Sh up and yep. down. He's flexing. Just jumping. One guy was flexing. Right. <laughs> the other guy's flexing. They're hitting each other. And it's just like it lights you up because it feels like for a moment what it must feel like to be on the exactly. PGA tour and hit a good shot. Right. And these guys going nuts. nuts. And then the cool thing too is that as we drove now we now we're having a good time. We drive up and we drive around to get there. And now they all come down from the porch and they're yeah. meeting us out there, they're like slapping you on the back. Right. And and one guy's telling me he's like, Yours rolled right over the cup. Yeah, I don't know how did. it didn't fall. It rolled over. So But then the fun didn't end. I missed there was the more. birdie You pie. missed the birdie putt. <laughs> but 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 I had the most, uh, the, probably the scariest chip shot of my life because you got these guys watching. I got the water all behind me. And you're the chipping green. back to the water. Yeah, I think I Texas wedged it. Because you might have. I think so because I just yeah I didn't want anything to do with that a, a chip. I don't. I think I was might have been in deep rough. I didn't even care at that point. Yeah. But uh, I was left with I don't know 10, 12 feet for for par, and I sunk it, and it was the tiger fist pump and the absolute eruption. So between your approach shot and my putt, we both had it, an epic like explosion experience from the from the gallery. It was so. Cool. It was so. Awesome. And then what was really cool after that is then we we then it was eighteen, so we had finished for our day, so we went up to the porch and joined them. Yep. And uh, unfortunately, we were like the last one of the last groups coming in. So we didn't get to stick around to cheer on too many other people. Right. But we got to talking with the guys. It was so cool. And this is what you run into so many times in Myrtle. 
guys putting together annual trips and things like that. And, yep. and these guys are saying they were from all different spots. They were a bunch of golf buddies who just all flew in and got together. They were telling us about a, a, a family tournament. That Battle they for do. the bracelet. Battle for the yeah, bracelet. My man wanted me to mention that here on the show. So yeah, and it was Cheers really cool. He, they it. were talking about like how they do that every year and and just really great guys to just sit there and chat with after the round for about 15 minutes. And uh it was an experience. It's a cool way to drive so home. I would say, day. like, especially if you play Caledonia Caledonia like on a weekend, you're coming down that, especially that porch was packed before we went out because they've got the morning, great food can. there too. So everyone's sitting out there eating. Just know you're going to co- be coming down 18 with the pressure on with a gallery that could run from five to 50 people. Yeah, it could be. It could be really big. And and if you're going to play it, loop it in the morning because a lot of people will take advantage of the $39 nine hole rate in the afternoon and they'll loop it another nine. Got a little busy. So it got backed up. I mean, there was three people on a hole at one point. Um, but whatever. The other tip too is with Caledonia, uh, they don't have a range there. Right. Uh, but what they will do is they will shuttle you over across the street to True Blue mm. for a range to warm up. Luckily, in our case, we didn't need a warm up because we were just coming off of 18 holes yeah, across, we st- you know, we stayed hot. next door. Because <laughs> the cause Heritage Club is literally next door. So we just went around the corner and yeah. went out to our next tea time. And um, by the way, cool just, it, it was cool. And but you know, you failed to mention before that you, you talked briefly about it, but we both made completely different twos on the par three before that 18. That's right. Completely different. Like you almost hold out hole in one. Yeah. And I had like a 20 foot birdie putt and yes, made it. And it was an it. epic moment going into that 18. So you can imagine, guys, our drive home from Caledonia was just We were nice. flying <laughs> high after, after, did you make par on 18? I made the par. Yeah. So we both were, we both were birdie par on the last two holes. Yeah. Yeah. So we, yeah, we were flying high. Yeah. We were flying high. And, sure. and it was a great, great day. 36 holes. And that's what, again, that's what you can do in a place like Myrtle Beach. You can play a lot of golf. Mm-hmm. So next day, Wednesday. Um, we took a break. We, we took 18. a little break. 18, 18 <laughs> holes in a day is a break for us. Yep. If it's not 36. Mm-hmm. So now again, talk about totally different golf. We go and play TPC Myrtle Beach. Yeah. Um, a plus plus staff there. From the moment you roll in, like it's really cool. All the cart attendants, the bag attendants, everybody, they've got caddy bibs on with their name on the back. Yep. And they are ready to like help and talk talk to you through like different things and like the practice facility was awesome there it was great yeah great big range good putting green right by the first tee you're yep. like almost forced to roll pots it's right there yep um, the one thing that i would say stood out for me that was definitely different was whereas most of the other courses we played were more fast and firm mm-hmm. you know they played a little bit more like the southern like florida type of courses that we're kind of used to everything's like it's tight lies yeah. it's firm it's mm-hmm. fast this was a little different. This felt a little bit more like, felt if there's any Florida comparison, it'd be more like Innisbrook, like the Copperhead course. I see that. Um, or otherwise, some of the stuff we see up here up north, like uh, some of the other TPC, TPC course, like TPC River Highlands. It was much softer. Mm-hmm. It was um, conditionally, you could tell they put a lot of water into that course. Yeah, it, it was, was green. You know what I mean? It was green. Real it green. was lush. It wasn't that fast firm. It was softer. It was a a bigger feeling course and it felt more like being on a pga tour course yeah lots of areas where you get punished i mean there were a lot of shots where we thought we were both in the middle of the fairway we had to run off into a fairway bunker that we didn't know could even happen yeah. run off into a pine needles or over to the right where you're like how did i end up here right there was a lot of times where we were punching out of pine straw uh when it shouldn't have been that way i mean i i would i don't know if i would go back and play that course it was so punishing it was gorgeous but but uh it was a, it was like beat me up a little bit. It was a tough course, but it, one thing we we did a lot of is asking the other guys we ran into what they where they were playing, what their thoughts were. Yep. A lot of people were similarly there on trips. It was a ve- very much a favorite around there. Mm. A lot of the people we ran into had played some of the other courses that we played. And yeah, th- we ran into a group from Michigan. Yeah, uh, those and, guys were great, and they were saying like they loved TPC Sawgrass. It was a little bit more what they were used to, like the lusher type of stuff. Mm. But um, you're right, it was. It was challenging. Like it's one of those courses that I feel like I'd play better the second time because even when I thought I hit a good shot, good tee shot, it would it would go quickly from trying to make par to trying yeah. to make bogey mm-hmm. because you'd have to burn a stroke, like punching it out, pine straw, tree line fairways, um, tricky. Like even thinking like number ten was a tricky hole. Yeah, you you mm-hmm. could there was water that they they had warned us about before we went out there. There's water. It's very reachable. You can't see it off the tee. Hit 
you know, aim left where it's a little bit more room and hit much less than driver. Much less. Much less. And then on that very hole, good tee shots. I was faced then with the scariest shot, and my approach shot went a little bit long. We were the other thing too. We coming out of that bunker, yeah. We struggled that day because of the wind. Yeah, we yeah. went out there. There was some weather blowing. We got great weather the whole time. There was, but there was some weather blowing in, and and it's cool. Like when you get into TPC, there's a sign that gives you all the conditions of the day, yeah. the stimp meter. Yep. Um, it tells you the chance wind, of rain, yeah. but it said the wind, and it says it says ten to fifteen mile an hour mm-hmm. right and that was in the morning and then the forecast for the afternoon was for it to jump up to uh There's two handles on that yeah right? 15 yeah. to 20 mm-hmm. and as the day is it's building so a couple of balls you get them up in the air they sail long story short i get over that green on 10 and now i'm in this bunker and this is where it's like pga tour like i see why this is like a tour tester type of thing i got a bunker shot coming back small green that slopes away from that bunker and then towards the water yeah and like what do you do there? Yeah. Hope it doesn't go in the water yeah. is all you do. Right. You know, I splashed it out. It hit the green. It just kept rolling, rolled off the green. But luckily, it was it, w- it was slow enough that it didn't roll in the water. Yeah. I mean, we were faced with a lot of tough stuff like that. That was a hard shot. I'm lucky you even got that thing out. Land yeah. the green. Forget it. It was it was rough. And that's what you get a lot of. You got a lot of that tough. It was a Fazio mm-hmm. design. Um, but that course will test you. I don't want to say that I did not like it. I loved it. I mean, I think every TPC course we've ever played, it's been like white glove type of experience. It's been nice. Yeah. It's been the, like you always feel like it's in the top upper echelon of the, of the other courses because of all the money they put into it. So you get a really good feeling. And those guys, you, you reminded me, those guys we met in the, in the shop from Michigan, I overheard them talking saying that the wives and the kids were back at the pool. So, I mean, there are guys who do this trip with their families and they go. And I mean, I remember we played a morning round. I think it was seven, seven o'clock, seven thirty. We were done in like three and a half, four hours. Yeah. I think the Herod or something. So guys, I mean, you could typically do that and get back to your life, so to speak. We, the place we stayed was awesome. It was like a resort. Yeah. The, the North, uh, North Beach Towers there. It literally looked like Atlantis. Again, huge thanks. Play golf, Myrtle Beach. That was awesome. Um, but uh, I mean, you could do this trip, both buddies trips and I think family with golf. You definitely could. And, there, and that's all the stuff that we didn't get to. That's experience. what those guys from Michigan were there. doing. Yeah. You know, there's a lot. I mean, it's Myrtle Beach. Yeah, right. There is a beach, but, yeah. we, you know, we're, we're there to play golf. So let's take you through the last two rounds. So, so, so that was day. that was the, you know, we had that Wednesday. We got a nice little break because at that point we're a little bit tired. We had just played three rounds of golf in, in a day and a half. Mm-hmm. And now, you know what I mean? So now we're moving on. Um, the final day, though, we're like, we're going to do 36 again. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. Okay. Let's do 36 again I mean, and blow maybe it just out for 18, the final we, day. we blew it out. So we head over the morning round. We played at Tidewater. Yeah, I love Tidewater. Tidewater is a one that I would put on the list to play again. Yeah. I'm going to tell you my second, my revisit itinerary after we're done. Okay. Based on being there again. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. I would say Tidewater, for me, it's, it's going to be on that revisit. Yep. Um, really fun course. Now we're back to the fast and firm conditions. Mm-hmm. For fast greens. Uh, I love fast greens, so that played right to what I like to do. Yep. Um, again, lots of beautiful holes by the intercoastal. Some challenging, very challenging holes down there. Um, I loved about Tidewater. Every single hole when you got up to it had a name and it had a slogan yeah yep. and they would give you these like ominous warnings and there's like a par five i remember that was down you know right by the intercoastal and and you would had such a diversity as you'd play by the water you'd get the wind way up like yeah. way up mm-hmm. and then we would you there were some holes that moved inland and they had these big big trees lining them so it blocked at least most of the wind down by the, the ground the, right. there was wind up high that you had to keep putting in but like when you got by the water, no doubt it was a breeze blowing through. And there was one is just like, beware of the breeze on this hole. It can really, it can make or break your day. Yeah. And you could score at Tidewater. You could. We both did. We both played yeah. really well there. Yeah. But there was a lot of areas where you could get in trouble. Uh-huh. We had to play smart golf. Uh, but we were both putting well. You know, I, I still remember that par three. I made a putt that surprised me. Number nine. Yeah. You I wasn't even that trying to boy. make it. Like, I, you it know, was so great. I, you know, I, I could say now, like, yeah, yeah, I knew that was going in. Yeah, no. no, no, no. I was like really fast greens, par three. I'm like par three. My strategy is always get out of there with a three. Mm-hmm. And I had about 25 feet. And I'm just like, I'm just going to try to get my speed, my pace right and just get it near the hole. Uh, so I could tap in for par and drained it. And that I, was just like, I think, yeah, that I mean, felt good. It did. And, and we started that day off both putting for Eagle. Yes. And <laughs> I love this because like I said, each hole has its own name and they start you off with a, with a, 
a short par five that's called the Big Easy. Yeah. And the whole idea was to get you something on the scorecard. Get you get fired you, up early. Get you fired up early. Yeah. Both super, super reachable in two. We both had eagle putts there. So uh, that felt really good. But that, 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 that was it. Give you a very false sense of security because there's a lot of holes out there that were tough pars. Yeah, they were. It was nice to see a 39. I haven't seen a three handle on a nine hole in years. So. Yeah. That so cool. that that one's a one Tide that we'll, in we'll my put heart back forever. on there, and then we uh, we round out, we finish up the trip uh, after Tidewater. Where do we head next? Barefoot love. Barefoot, right? We had lunch in the clubhouse. Then Great we had clubhouse. Yep. We got to sit out on the back deck and have some lunch, and 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 there, I would say the vibes were on point. Remember, we're standing yeah. outside. They've got the outdoor grill, grill. going. They had an outdoor out. bar. Mm-hmm. Four great golf courses there. Um, and then there's even a, one of them is they're each designed by a different designer. You had you had a uh, a Fazio, a Norman, uh, Davis Love, the one we played, and a Pete Dye course out there. Yep. Um, they've got one great clubhouse, but then the, the Dye course has its own clubhouse, the Dye Clubhouse. Mm-hmm. Um, but we went out right. on the Love, and a couple things. One, the way they, there was these faux ruins that were worked in really cool the way they did that made for some fun shots we even had a little fun just chipping through the window yeah. and stuff like that uh, wait those were faux i uh, thought i could have sw- i've thought the whole time that there was a house there that was just like you know, broken I down there was and a they built it around too, but there. i didn't even care to think about i it. could be wrong because i heard it both ways someone specifically said i remember in reading up on it someone said the faux ruins okay and others said the ruins so if anyone knows for sure drop it in the comments Are whether they're real faux or, not. or not i feel bamboozled <laughs> yeah but the love course here now was the smallest greens yeah. that not only did we play there that I think I've ever played. Yeah. Some were really thin. Like Some of the greens, the one green was as big as the green in your backyard. Right. They were so small. Right. And, but, but there it was kind of the opposite. You had a lot of tee shots that were wide open, big fairways. I remember that, that split par five, that split fairway par five, which was the widest and biggest tee shot i think i've ever seen since yeah. maybe playing 18 at, at the old course yeah. in st andrews uh-huh. this is the this fairway was like so wide like in both directions there was you know you could just hit it where that was you my want. reserve tank shot that was that the i reserve, found something yes, deep down and um that was one that that it was just like you know tremendously big but then your approach shots were everything there were these tiny greens mm-hmm. I, I remember one spot i even paced one off it was like less than 10 paces yeah, it was just these that tiny and they would get even tinier when they they would they they're not round greens they were like oblong and they would put the pin in these spots that maybe it's 5 paces yeah. wide mm-hmm. so really really test your your approach shot ability um but it was interesting like they had the ruins and and one one, it, it was like this, this brick wall that backstopped a short par four. So if you really wanted to bomb it yeah. and go for it, Love that. and if you went long, the wall just, would save you. that wall. Yeah. Yeah, that was pretty cool. I mean, I, I, I'd put that as the, my least favorite course of the whole week. And I don't know if it had to do with just being the end of the week, low on energy, Tired. Kind of mentally done. But for me, it just didn't have like the intercoastal, the water, the... The other stuff that we experienced at the beginning of the week. Yeah, I mean, that's, I, mean I don't know. I thoroughly I mean, enjoyed it. It's probably know. because I played. <laughs> I played great. Yeah. I, I don't know what happened, but that back nine was the best nine holes I've I don't ever get played. This guy. Back nine of a hundred eight hole golf trip. The last nine fires it up. I think I was just because I was tired and forced to swing <laughs> yeah, conservative and easy. But, maybe that's uh, it. I, I shot even par on the back nine. Me yeah, and Mike was, were looking at each other like, what is yeah. going on right now? <laughs> Frankie Q Schools is he's back. Up the corn you know, fairy. He, he got going. DQ'd at TPC Myrtle. He but got now DQ'd hard there. D- TPC Myrtle was the one that really beat me up. I, I would love to get another shot at that place and not play that, that well. But what I will say is like, the back nine at the love course for me felt like, do you remember in old school when yep. Will Farrell's doing the debate and Frank he blacks the tank out? Blacks out. Black he out. blacks out and he's and he's like he does great and then he comes out and he's like, What happened? Yeah. That's exactly how I felt in the back nine. That's it. At one point, so tired and delirious, I remember I told you guys, I stood over a putt and almost just kept going. Yeah. I saw stars, saw stars and I'm just like, Mike, wherever you see the next cart girl, just stop her. I need water need, yeah, bad. Need dehydrating. But she didn't even come for like five more holes. We were yeah. like dying. Yep. <laughs> dying. Yeah. And, but yeah, that was, I had to just get some water in me, but like we were tired, we were exhausted, but we were having fun. And you know, it, it just, it's just one of those things. Like even the last hole, I remember that was like such a small green. It's hilarious standing on it. But uh, the greens were, 
I think part of the reason why I scored well, like I just really like fast, firm greens, yeah. and I can just putt better on them. And your score at the end of the day, how well you're putting. I just got a Torzak, 14s, it lights out. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. It's the running joke we had, but uh, but it was an epic trip. And I think one, one of the favorite off-course things for me, I wanted to mention our favorite meal. I think that last night, that, that hook and barrel. Yes. We had that candied bacon. I don't know Bro. what that was. We should have got 10 more of those. Lights out. Lights out. That uh, short rib. Uh, braised short rib. Could relive it in a Did second. we all get that? We all, we all got did. it. We're just, <laughs> you know, just right over the table. Yeah, yeah. all for the but table. But there were some great spots, like even that little brewery you and I went to the one night. That's right. There was that little brewery with a ton of local beers. Yeah. right. At, it was right at Barefoot. Yeah. There, so there's ultimately, there's so much, but I think our tip is going to be, if you're going to plan a trip, especially for the first time, spend some time up front looking at like what you want to do yeah. because you, otherwise if you just get down there and say i'll just figure it out when we get down here just know you're going to be overwhelmed with options totally i mean There's we hit the so we hit the fast food in the morning the yeah. dunkin donuts the starbucks the chick-fil-a is on the way back because yeah. we were racing but uh there's a lot of good spots down there and if i could do this trip again i think putting putting some courses on the list i think i would do caledonia morning true blue because we never played it afternoon yes i would hit that grand dunes um the dunes club which where the pga tour is coming at that which think is that private, private though i think You'd it's semi private out there i think you think we'd have to get someone out there that was the difference this this trip was all public courses for us but uh i'd love to see it just to see what all the hype is about and um i think i would try the um oh the the not the love the die at the, barefoot yeah and then I'd have Play Golf Myrtle Beach just pick another fifth one that I've never been to, like a Paulie's Plantation. You sliding Tidewater in there or no? You could... I would throw Tidewater back in there, but I think if I'm going to pick one to replay, it's going to be Caledonia just for that experience on 18 again. Yes, I think I would, I would do it Caledonia morning because I want the lunch crowd. Right. Yeah. You got to hit that lunch crowd. Right. I would definitely do Caledonia again. And I play would Play it say... differently, by the way. What? I'd play it much differently, by the way. Ca what, Caledonia. No, that... the whole course. I'd play How would you play strategic. It? I would use a lot more irons off the tee. Yeah. A lot more. There was a lot of places where like the... <laughs> he says that. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah no, never mind. I would just fire away. Mike just says that. I think I would, but no. Well, one yeah. thing I will say, Cal I will I will kind of like leave you with this. I would play Caledonia again, and I would add True Blue because I want yeah. to do yeah. that. But where I think you're not going to be disappointed playing a place like Caledonia again is there. We didn't even talk about this, but the greens were... These long, very long, like oblong shaped greens, right? Yep. I'll give you a perfect example. The first part three we played. Yeah. It was 53 yards long, the green. Yeah, yeah, Right? Yeah. So not Up wide. <laughs> you protected on both sides by, by waist, right? But where we played it that day, the pin was in the back for our tees. It was 171, mm -hmm. right? They could put that pin up and make it 150. Yeah. So I was saying this while we were out there. What's so cool is that this course is a type of course that definitely doesn't play the same twice. Right. But depending on where they put that pin and depending on the wind, you could have a three to four club difference of what you're hitting. Yeah. So mm -hmm. you're going to get a whole brand new experience feeling like you're playing a different hole. That's true. Because of how big he made those greens and where he could put them. And the par threes were all like that. They could put that pin in different spots. It is a totally different shot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I think Caledonia is one I could play again and not feel like it, it it's getting old, but True Blue is the one that I wish we could do, and we, we missed, and it was just one we couldn't fit in the itinerary, and they had an event going on, and we just couldn't get out there, but it gives us a great excuse to go back. You're right. So, like, guys, let us know in the comments some of your favorite spots in Myrtle Beach, some spots that you would uh, you think we should go next time we go down there, some can't miss, some that you're just dying to play. Uh, but either way, it lives up to the name of being you know, golf town USA, yeah, totally. so to speak. Mm -hmm. there, I mean, literally there are people who have golf carts as cars driving on the road. Yeah. Yes. 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 And they just drive from one place. And they, they're, yeah. they're parked at the restaurants. They're parked at the Everywhere. golf. So there's a lot of, uh, that vibe of like, Hey, I'm going to retire down there and play golf every day in my life. You yeah, got totally. 90 courses. You got a million mm -hmm. options. So anyway, great trip. Look out for that. Make sure you subscribe to the main channel. You're going to see all that content coming in the coming weeks. We're going to have a six, a weekly six episode, uh, series sh taking you through each one of the courses and we really dig deep and dive into it. So hopefully you guys enjoy that. Thanks for watching. And sorry, no podcast last week, but we're back now again. And uh, we've got a lot of fun podcasts coming up for you really soon. So stay tuned for that. We'll see you next week.